What's going on guys? Kenny here again and today I've got another hype versus reality video for you guys and what that's going to be about today is this guy. That's right, this is the ZT0562 TS and the TS stands for Tiger Stripe uh, and this guy is I believe a sprint run in the 0562 I don't think these are going to be available uh, more in like a production line, but yeah, but more of like a sprint run. And this is in CPM 20 CV. Uh, this is a hinderer design. For those of you that don't know, the 0562 is a hinderer design. And um, just so you know, I did acquire this from River's Edge Cutlery, guys. Um, if you haven't heard of River's Edge Cutlery, uh, go check them out. They're a really cool uh, family-owned retailer in Ohio. And just a very small family-owned shop. And they have excellent customer service um, with one-on-one -on -one type of, uh, you know, just you don't get that very often in today's society. And to have that one-on-one -on -one service, be able to talk to someone and talk to the same guy every time, it's hard to find these days. Um, and they just have an excellent, ex excellent customer service. Uh, and they also have great pricing, guys. They are very competitive with their pricing. They usually have a good uh, variety of selection. They don't always have the, the largest numbers of each knife because they're such a small retail shop. But in saying that, uh, when they do have it, they have it at a good uh, competitive price which is hard to do when you're competing up against guys like uh, Blade HQ and Knife Center and these bigger retailers because they're buying in much bigger bulk. So to be able to compete with your pricing, that's really excellent of them. And, uh, and then of course, just the one-on-one -on -one service you get is really where, where it's at. So big shout out and thank you to them. Um, and uh, if you guys haven't checked them out, go check them out. These are still available there, I believe. Uh, depending on when you're watching this and I will put a uh, a link in the description of this video to go ahead and go grab this guy from River's Edge Cutlery. I believe they're 260 and I think that's just a matte pricing all across the board because I think even at Blade HQ it's it's still 260 knife center. So like I said, uh, River's Edge is still competitive with their pricing. Moving right along, I'm going to go into um, the the um, uh, specs of this knife. I'm gonna go ahead and put the specs on the page right here. If you guys don't know, that's kind of how I start these uh, hype versus reality. I'll just put the spec on. I don't wanna waste you guys' time spewing off numbers. Then I'll go ahead and move along to the uh, size comparisons. We'll go ahead and start with its brethren, the ZT0609. As you guys can see, this is a much larger knife than the 0609, which isn't exactly a small knife, guys. Um, as you can see, this is definitely a, you know, it's not a, I wouldn't say a full-size knife, but it's definitely in that mid-size uh, compact EDC type of thing. So uh, that's that. And then I'll go ahead and bring in a budget option. This is the Civivi Backlash. Very similar size to the 0562. So that's a good size comparison. And then I'll go ahead and bring in some spider coes. Got the Spidey Chef. Similar size knife. Definitely a bit smaller than the Para 3, which is definitely going to be dwarfed by this guy. Then we'll go ahead and bring in Benchmade. Here's the 940. Smaller, but not that much smaller. And let's go ahead and bring in the Keen. This is the Ray Laconico and Ma Mass Drop slash Wii Laconico Keen. Just, just slightly shorter in overall length and blade length as well. Mostly coming from the blade length, I feel like. Because you can see the handles are relatively similar size. So more of the blade length here on the ZT. So if you're the type of guy that really concerns themselves with like handle to blade ratio, uh, you might get a little bit more out of the ZT. But really similar guys, it's so subtle that I wouldn't really say that, um, even though I did. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving right along, 
Uh, if you guys don't watch my hype versus reality videos, um, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go into the hype, which is mostly just whether it be from the manufacturer, the, um, the distributors, uh, or the community in general. We all get hype on a lot of these knives. It, not even just knives, guys. In everything in life, I feel like everything's hyped these days. It's all about, oh, getting that hype up on the product so that everyone wants to buy it. So, um, yeah, there's hype involved with this. Also involved in, like, you know, personal hype, what we make for ourselves. Like, oh, I, I love the way that looks or I love the way that um, – I love that size or I love titanium or whatever it may be. Um, we create our own hype as well. And then I'll go into the reality of when I got it, used it, you know, put it to work. How, how did it – how did it um, – how did it relate to that hype? You know, is it, did it actually live up to the hype or did it fall short or did it nail it, but it's not exactly right for me? Um, I'll go into that at the end and then I'll let you know whether it's something I'm going to keep or move along or what's going on and, and how I feel about it. So getting right into it, I'm going to talk about the hype, the hype on this knife guys. Um, for one, uh, it's a ZT, guys. And I didn't have a lot of experience with ZT, especially in their, like, um, like thick, beefy, that, that ZT construction, you know, like overbuilt, tough. Um, I do have – I had handled this before I got that. And this is kind of a departure from their normal type of knife. So this wasn't a true um, indication of whether I would like ZT as a company necessarily. But it gave me um, something to kind of hold from ZT, which was cool. But this was like a true like – this is what I think of when I think of ZT. I think of like those hinder designs and like just really overbuilt beefy designs. So it was cool to check that out. Um, also, this fits into the kind of like the size range I've been carrying a lot. That like three and a half inch blade, um, like eight inch overall. This is a little over eight inches, but you know, relative, um, relatively eight inches. Uh, I think it's eight and a quarter. Um, you guys know from the specs I put on. But yeah, it's got that good size. Um, the weight's like right there in that five ounce range. It's a little over, about half inch thickness in the handle, about where I usually go with my EDC size. Um, also, this is a hinderer design. I didn't, I, uh, dude, the, the oldest hinderer I had, I have had a hinderer um, design, and that was the Cryo. The Cryo 2, I believe, uh, by Kershaw. And I did love that little knife, and that was a good knife for me. Um, and just a great all-around EDC, you know, throw it in your pocket, don't worry about it type of knife uh, with assisted uh, action. And obviously, I would never carry that knife these days. I did actually give that to one of my friends. But I did like the design, and I wanted to try other hinders, and I wanted to see what it was all about because I had throughout my life, I've always heard about hinder and his knives and how um, amazingly built they were. So I wanted to check that out. And the same goes for ZT. Uh, and then also uh, this design in general, the 0562 goes back a ways and it's got a lot of hype on it for just being a great EDC all around super tough knife. Um, but not known for its geometry, uh, even though there are a few different grind types and everything. So in saying that, uh, that's pretty much the hype on the knife. Um, just that overbuilt, super tough, all around EDC, great size, um, good action, everything like that. Uh, so yeah, I really wanted to check it out. And as far as the Tiger Stripes concerned and everything, it, it just so happens that's the, the version I could get. I'm not usually very into like tactical looking knives like this, but it was the one I could get and I figured, hey, I can always sell it if I don't love it. I'll go ahead and grab it. So in saying that, once I got this thing in hand and got it out of box, uh, you guys probably saw my unboxing and I was thoroughly impressed with this knife, guys. Um, for one, oh, it's just beefy, super beefy knife. And first things first, uh, overlooking the knife, the fit and finish is really well done. Uh, the finish, as far as the finish is concerned, uh, this is just like a peel ply car, uh, um, G10 on the one scale side, like the show side. And it does have a titanium liner between that G10 and um, the standoffs and everything and the blade. So there is titanium between the G10, which even beefens it up even more. It's going to be even stronger 
without this just being G10 on the show side. And then of course we have a titanium frame lock on the frame side, on the um, lock side. And yeah, this thing is super beefy. And you've got four standoffs at the back there. So there's definitely no flexing <laughs> in this handle. It is solid as a rock. And as far as the like fits concerned, everything seems to fit together really well. I don't notice any anything here as far as like the uh, G10 to the titanium. I have taken this knife apart and put it back together and it did go back together just right. Seemed like everything lined up back where it was supposed to be. Um, yeah, and the finish as far as the DLC or whatever this is concerned is, is done very well and it's held up well. I do notice some marking there from going in and out of the pocket, but I don't know what that touched. And it might just kind of buff out eventually, I don't know. Um, you guys can see this is a painted clip, which has scratched up a bit. Not exactly ideal, but not a deal breaker for me either. I don't mind the worn look, so. Yeah, pretty good fit and finish, guys. Uh, as far as fit's concerned, there is something I did um, find later. So uh, when I first got this guy, you'll see in the unboxing that the centering was perfect. Um, but what ended up happening is after about two or three days of using the knife, um, that deployment is awesome, guys. Uh, I'll get into action after this. But after a few days of using the knife, I noticed when I deployed it, uh, it would travel. The 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 lock would travel and it would slip in. And as it slipped in, it would actually lock, have a stick. It would have lock stick and really bad lock stick to where it pop free and like almost be like, it would almost, it was almost um, a dangerous lock stick because it was just really bad. So what I did is I just took the knife apart and cleaned everything. And there was a lot of gunk just from the factory and everything. So cleaned it out, put it back together, perfect lockup. No lock stick, no slip, no travel really. It does travel a little bit. You guys can see I got about maybe 30 to 40% there, probably more like 40%. And you'll see uh, it travels to about 50%, but really very little, if any, lock stick. Just a little bit of lock stick, as you guys heard. Just a little bit. But nothing I'd be uh, worried about, and actually that's fine. You know, when you're bearing down and then you don't want that thing to fail, obviously it's not going to. Uh, but in, in saying that, I did spine whack this. And I've had no failure, even doing it on, uh, on wood. No failure. So uh, that's done well, and the fit fit does seem to be very good. Um, although, like I said, when I put it back together after that, I couldn't get it centered. And I've even yesterday I tried to do it again and I could not get it centered. That's about as good as it gets. But it's not horrible. Just slightly to the left there. Um, yeah, but other thing, you know, that action, as soon as I deployed this, guys, oh my gosh, man. I mean, you can deploy this however you want. The detent is super dialed in. And um, push button, light switch, you know, thumb. Really, any way I can deploy it, this thing deploys rockets out, almost some recoil. You can see it like kind of recoil, really shakes the knife. Just excellent, excellent deployment. And this doesn't have stop pins. This has the external stop pins, which even helps even more with the, with that lockup. Solid lockup guys in every direction. Really good. And like I said, really good lockup that way. Um, in the drop, dropping free, as you can see, as I disengage, it does drop. You do have to move your finger back because the detent goes on right there. That's where it's on. So you have to kind of push your, if you got thick thumbs like I do, you got to kind of keep them back so that it gets down to that point and then it will drop. Um, it, at this, with the pivot um, at this tension, 
it's not like drop shutty, like drop shut. It doesn't drop free by itself, but you can light, light shake it shut. So it's pretty, pretty satisfying as far as action's concerned. Yeah, really enjoy that. But it does stay where it's put. Really nice action. And that's a solid lockup in every direction. So really happy with that. Um, and then like I said, in taking it apart, guys, look how close the tolerances here are. And this is bearings. Um, they are steel bearings. And I think it's a steel detent ball. Yeah, de uh, steel detent ball as well. Um, they are big bearings though, guys. These are like... I want to say almost like two millimeter ball bearings. They were like pretty big ball bearings. Like there's like six ball bearings and they're much larger than your average ball bearings. And they are really beefy and it looks like it would be very strong. And as you can see how tight these tolerances are, the bearings are recessed. So on one side, on this side, you have it recessed into the blade. Bearings are recessed into the blade. And on this side, they're recessed into the uh, the um, lock scale because you can see this this uh, titanium is much thinner so they had to recess it into the blade which is a nice touch guys and it keeps the tolerances much tighter uh, makes the knife much narrower than it would be if they didn't do that and it makes for a very smooth action so excellently done by ZT on that or by Hinder on the design and, um, and ZT on the execution but really nice Really nice as far as that's concerned. As you guys can see, this has an over-travel stop. It also has a lock bar insert. So uh, it's a little much, you know, like maybe they could have got rid of that, but that is the hinder kind of thing. And um, and yeah, the, the lock bar insert, you know, seems to work fine. Although this isn't something I necessarily look for in a knife. I don't mind knives that don't have lock bar inserts. I really don't, so... Um, even though that it, you know, it's nice, it's nice and it, it works very well in this case. Um, it, I don't get any lock stick. A lot of times I get these ones with lock bar inserts and then they have lock stick anyways. And it's like, what's the point of the lock bar insert there? But, uh, in saying that I'm going to go ahead and talk about the, the use of the knife. Um, I'll go ahead and put on the screen here, uh, me using the knife and I did use it extensively. It. It did very well for me. Um, I did use the factory edge for a while, but with the factory edge, I found that it was actually, um, not only was it relatively obtuse, but it was also just not very keen. I didn't love the factory edge, so I fairly quickly put my own edge on it. And when I did so, it, it really performed much better, and I was happy with the performance once I put my own edge on it. Um, this is definitely a thicker, thicker uh, geometry than what I normally carry. So I did notice sometimes where it would get a little more hung up, but most of the time it was when I was cutting through four or five thick or four to six thick cardboard and really trying to uh, push through thick, thick stock. You know, once I, once I just went to like two or three thick, it, it was easily slicing through. Um, but yeah, as far as like super thick, cardboard I would think that this would get hung up a little bit more than something with a thinner <clears throat> excuse me instead of something with a thinner behind the edge thickness than this knife um, although like yeah with 0.16 stock thickness I, I really don't think that's where the you know obviously you, you guys have heard um, a lot of people talking about geometry lately and as you guys well know geometry the the stock thickness does not have as much effect as the behind the edge thickness. So if the behind the edge thickness is, um, you know, really thick and the stock is thin, it's still not going to perform as good as something that has a thick stock with a thin behind the edge thickness. Um, it, it really does depend on the media that you're cutting though. The materials definitely have most of, that's definitely going to make the big difference of, of what your geometry should be or the ideal geometry, I should say. But with this knife, I did notice that in most people's everyday use, what you're going to be doing with it, it would perform just fine. And it, it, I really did enjoy carrying this knife. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. 
um, because I thought I was just going to be just overwhelmed with the stock thick. Well, I mean, with the um, behind the edge thickness and the weight of the knife, the size of the knife, the overbuiltness of the knife. I, I'm really not usually into these types of knives. So in saying that, I was surprised and really did enjoy um, carrying this knife and using it. And um, in, in all reality, it made me want to really try a hinderer um, is what it really did. So um, in saying that, I'm going to go ahead and probably bring you guys back right here. And we'll go ahead and talk more about the, um, the geometry and also the ergonomics of the knife. Uh, first things first, I want to go ahead and bring out uh, some calipers and then zero it out. Uh, this is at 17 degrees, I think almost 18 degrees per side. I would say probably like 35 degree inclusive. Yeah, 27 thousandths right here. Twenty four in the middle there. Twenty three right at the belly. And probably gonna thicken out by the tip. Twenty eight. Gonna check back here again, make sure I'm getting close enough to that shoulder. Yeah, twenty eight, twenty seven. So, you know, 23 at the thinnest spot right here, which is what I noticed. And with the slicer geometry, that's kind of what you get. You can see how short the, the bevel is here. And then out here, it gets definitely thinner and broader. So this is the slicer blade. And if I'm going hinder, I'd probably go this route unless I'm just going full thickness, you know, like go for the fatty or something like that. Because um, the like the Warren Cliff fatty. But... This was nice, you know, it did perform well enough. And when I noticed when I was going through thicker stuff, if I just kept it to this part of the blade, it definitely performed better. Um, and in saying that I did, you know, I, I definitely got, I, I, I love the what using this knife. I did love using it. And the 20 CV did sharpen up nicely. Although I felt like the first edge wasn't as good as I was expecting. On the second edge, it did better. And I do notice that it came up a, a lot keener. It, it felt better and it seemed like it held up better. Uh, although I do think that there's some left on the table. I think that this is going to get even better and better with sharpening, with uh, subsequent sharpenings. So I look forward to um, seeing how the edges go. And then as far as, um, as far as carry goes, guys, as, or I, I'm, I'm sorry, I need to talk about ergonomics. As far as ergonomics go, this knife was really good as far as ergonomics go. I enjoyed the use of this very much so. Um, this does have some, as you guys can see, this has some some uh, finger, I wouldn't call them choils, but it does have finger grooves. And for my medium to large size hands, kind of average size hands, I have a pretty wide, broad um, palm at three, three and three quarters, um, but I have a pretty short palm at four inches from here to the base. Uh, the point from the base of my knuckle to the tip is about six and a quarter to six and a half. And this thing just fits excellently in my hand. My hands just fall right into the grooves. And I even have room to spare. And in the hammer grip, it felt great. I uh, didn't really notice any hot spots, even in hard pushing through. Um, it really felt comfortable. Uh, obviously the saber grip feels excellent. You can even bring your thumb out here if you need more room. This is a, a comfortable position, but I could see people feeling jammed if they keep their finger right on the jimping, which is done well, by the way. This jimping is uh, nice and smooth, but then if you push your fingers down, it's very sticky. So very well done jimping um, and chamfered nicely. Um, I didn't mention with the finish, guys, this thing is chamfered very well. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around here. But you can see even here, it's chamfered very well, which is a nice touch. Um, that's some spots that some makers miss, guys, to be honest. Something that a lot of makers miss. Uh, chamfered well on the back, and that helps when you're slamming into some hammer grip or something. So that was really well done. The only spots I noticed on this knife that were, might turn into hot spots and something I 
I did notice is the channel down the middle. Um, it's just a little bit, but I mean, that's pretty much every folder, guys. Um, these are a little hard corners, so maybe in long, hard use, especially if your hands are smaller or bigger than mine, that might become an issue. But this feels great. Feels great for the most part. And this curve here just excellently fits in the hand and really works well. So enjoyed using this guy. And I do like the fact that there's no, it's just one spot to grip and a full blade. And it just works well in every way like that. So really nicely done by Hinder and then execution by ZT on that. Uh, feels great in the hand. And, um, and then in the pocket, guys, if I'm moving into how this thing carried, uh, it is a little on the heavy side for what I normally carry. Uh, you guys saw from the specs, I think it says like 5.57 or something. Um, and 5.64, and that's a good weight for such a beefy, gnarly knife. Uh, definitely, definitely a nice, uh, definitely nice as far as the weight's concerned on that. And I didn't notice it too much, especially when I carried in like my back pocket. I didn't notice it um, being too heavy or anything. It does have a really big, uh, <laughs> the flipper is huge. So um, if, if that's something that you guys deal with or worry about, yeah, that's a big flipper tab. But for me, I don't really worry about it. If anything's in that pocket, it's going to be uh, my wallet, and that's not really going to do any damage to my wallet. So it doesn't bother me at all. Um, if anything could be changed on this, I'd say maybe like get rid of one of these uh, standoffs. I mean, three would have been fine, but... That's kind of ZT and Hinder's uh, jam, you know, is that like overbuilt type of quality. And it does make this thing super, super um, tough. And of course, that another thing that uh, that titanium uh, liner on the G10 side, it's kind of like, you know, they probably could have just done G10. But it's another level of, um, you know, just being even more tough. And it does help with the bearing and stuff because you don't have to have um, a bearing right against G10 or put some kind of, uh, you know, uh, washer in there. Uh, these bearings are running right up against titanium. There is no uh, steel liner or steel washer that goes in there. So that is one thing to notice, but it doesn't hurt the, the action at all. So that's, that's nice. And then as far as... Um, this clip is concerned look how nice and deep that is it does disappear in the pocket pretty nicely and it curves back as well so that's nice and it did carry really well i enjoyed carrying this knife uh the weight was maybe maybe if you have really light shorts or something you might notice this thing bouncing around but for my jeans and normal carry i didn't notice it really nice one thing i will say is in those pockets where it's more of like a um, on the side, not like a jean pocket where it's at the top and it's going in and can tuck back. Um, when you're in those pockets where it all kind of focuses down your leg, uh, the side slip pockets, this thing did feel a little big. You know, it's just a little wide in the pocket and it felt a little big in, in those types of pockets. But in a jean pocket, it disappeared. Um, in like slack type pockets, this does take up a lot of space in the bottom of the pocket. Um, something like this obviously is not going to take up much as much space. Um, even something like this really just doesn't take up much space in the bottom of that pocket and it keeps a little more uh, room, but not something I worried about. Um, and I just carried it in my back pocket if that was the case. So really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to kind of wrap it up here guys. Cause I do, I do love this knife and I, I did enjoy using it. Um, but what I will say is I am going to move this guy along. Uh, I'm probably going to trade him and just keep the, you know, the beast running and just get another knife in for review and move this guy along just because even though I do like him a lot, um, it's not something where I'm like, I, I can't live without it. I feel like, um, I have other knives that kind of fit around this knife and this one isn't like winning any battles necessarily. So I am going to move him along. He is going to get HRC tested by Kurt, but from there it might be going to a new owner. So I am going to let you guys know that. And again, it's not anything against the knife. I do love it. I just, I just have so many knives. It just, it just fits into too many, 
categories that have other knives that I would pick before it. So yeah, it is going to move along and um, I do look forward to what's coming behind it. And, um, and what this did do is make me want, like I said, it made me want to hinder. And what's going to come next behind this is a hinder, a real true hinder, because um, I've heard people say, oh, this is better than the hinder and blah, blah, blah. You know, guys, I don't, I don't buy it for one second. I'm sorry. Uh, that's like saying, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't even want to try and compare anything else to like a CRK. You know, like you get a Chris Reeve, it's on a whole nother level than anything they want to try and compare to a Chris Reeve. Um, and the same thing goes for this, you know. Yeah, I can understand if maybe the action's a little like more drop shut on, on the ZT version than like the Hinder version. But the Hinder version is going to be uh, head and shoulders above this. I, I have no doubt about that. As far as um, manufacturing, construction wise, like... It's just going to be tighter tolerances. It's, it, there's no way that this could compete with that. I'm sorry. But I know I'm probably going to have people tell me that I'm wrong about that. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll probably be able to get a real hinder in hand and be able to do a comparative um, review on, on the hinder. But I probably won't have this guy at that point to actually compare in hand to hand. But I'll definitely be having the memory of this guy. But saying that, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate um, all your subs, comments, um, you know, uh, likes and dislikes, whatever it may be. And yeah, thanks. Uh, big thanks to River's Edge Cutlery for getting this guy in my hand. And um, if you guys don't know about them, go check them out right now. Um, and this knife is available there. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.